Hey guys, we're going to be looking at complex numbers in polar form in this session. Now, if you already know how to do modulus and argument, you pretty much know how to do this. It's pretty straightforward. All right, let's get started anyway. All right, say we have a complex number, which is x plus i, y in this case. Now, I'm gonna, this is written in rectangular form. I'm going to show you guys how to write this in polar form. Now, to, just to remind you, um, we can work out the distance of the blue line, which is the um, the modulus, and which is r, and of course we can also work out what the angle is, or in this case, which is called the argument, which is theta. Now, also we know that the x and y component could be that green line and the purple line right there. The green line could be the x, and the purple line is the y. So, from this point, we also know that r is the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle for where theta is, well, you can kind of see where theta is, which means if y would then be the opposite side and x would be the adjacent side. So basically, you got to imagine like this. What you need to do is you need to write x in terms of r and theta. So we know to do that because we're working with um, x and r, it's adjacent and hypotenuse, we know that cos theta would equal adjacent over hypotenuse, which means cos theta would equal x divided by r. And rearranging this, we will get x is equal to r cos theta. So we need to do the same thing now for y. y in terms of r and theta. So if you have a look at y, that's the opposite side, and we're working with opposite and hypotenuse. So it'll be sine theta equals opposite divided by hypotenuse. So with that in mind, we have sine theta equals opposite, which is y, and hypotenuse, which equals r. Rearranging this, we would get y is equal to r sine theta. Okay, so once you have this, um, we continue from where what we had originally, which was that rectangular form is when z equals x plus i y. So at this point, we need to replace everything in terms of r and theta, and that's what polar form is. So we're going to do that right here. x is equal to r cos theta plus i times y, which is r sine theta. So from this point, we know that r is a common factor we can take out, so it'll be r cos theta plus i sine theta. Now guys, knowing us mathematicians, we always like to make things short, and uh, we're going to have a shortcut again here, and I'm going to show you guys how to write cos theta plus i sine theta in a really fast way. We write it as cis theta. So basically, when you see the cis, c-i-s, it actually means cos theta plus cos plus i sine, that's what it means. Okay, so... Rectangular form is x plus i, y, and in polar form, it would be z is equal to r cis theta. And like I said, cis theta cis is the part where it's cos plus i sine. Okay, with this in mind, let's have a look at a couple of examples. So the first example we're going to be looking at is going from rectangular to polar form. So we've got the complex number 2 minus 3i, and we want to write this in polar form. Now guys, with complex numbers, it's always a good idea to just draw a rough sketch just to see where the complex number is and kind of work around it, all right? Now 2 minus 3i, I know it's going to look something like this, where 2 on the x-axis and negative 3i on the y-axis right there, okay? Which means I know that that's modulus right there, which is that r, and my theta, or argument, is going to be a negative angle because it's actually going below the x-axis. With that in mind, I'll work out what r is, the modulus is first. So modulus is going to be square root of 2 squared plus negative 3 squared. Simplifying this, I get square root of 4 plus 9, which is square root of 13, which means my modulus is square root of 13. Now I need to work out what my argument is. To figure, out, figure that out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that little triangle right there where my modulus 
is square root of 13. My x-axis would be 2. So, I, I mean, I only need these two things. And I'm going to work out what theta is. Okay. Square root of 13 is the hypotenuse. 2 would be adjacent. So, I'm using cos. So, cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Rearranging everything. And now, I need to substitute adjacent and hypotenuse. So, theta is equal to inverse cos of 2 divided by square root of 13. And when I do this, I end up with negative 56. Sorry about that, guys. Press the wrong button there. <laughs> anyway, you should get theta is equal to negative 56.3 degrees. Okay, so we have our r, we have our theta, which means 2 minus 3i in polar form is square root of 13, which is r, cis, and theta is equal to negative 56.3 degrees. So as you can see, that is how we write it in polar form. All right, the next example I'm going to be looking, looking at going from polar to rectangular. So here we go. Going from polar to rectangular, write 2 cis 60 degrees in A plus IB form. Okay, once again, we want to actually draw this as a rough sketch somewhere so you kind of get an idea of what you're working with. Now, this is cis 60, uh, 60 degrees is positive, so I know that it's going to be rising 60 degrees above the x-axis, so it's going to look something like this right here, where that's 60 degrees, where the argument is 60 degrees, and the modulus is 2. Okay, so with that in mind, there's multiple, I mean, there's a couple of ways of doing this, but I'm just going to show you the, one of the easier ones. Um, what we do know is... We know that r cis theta can be written as r times cos theta plus i sine theta. Okay, so which means 2 cis 60 degrees is equal to 2 cos 60 plus i sine 60. And then it's just a matter of solving cos 60 and sine 60. So you have 2 cos 60 is equal to 0 0.5 plus i sine 60 is equal to 0 0.866. And simplifying this, you should get 1 plus 1 1.732i. And that's it in A plus IB form. So 2 cis 60 degrees could be written as 1 plus 1 1.732i in the rectangular form. All right, guys, that's basically looking at... Um, complex numbers where you can go from rectangular to polar and backwards. That's all for this session. Thanks for watching.